This webinar will be recorded and sent to all registrants a few days after we finish. You can also find it on Blueprint, which is our e-learning platform, by going to facebook.com slash blueprint slash webinars. My name is Wes Finley. I work on the marketing for Facebook's core ad products. I have to be pretty familiar with how these products optimize and deliver ads, but delivery systems can be really complex. It's even more challenging because we have to keep up with so many changes. This complexity also leads to a lot of misconception about ads delivery, but that's one of the reasons why I'm excited to share this content with you and hopefully clear some things up. Just to set some expectations, this webinar is going to be a bit technical with about how ads delivery auctions function. I'll try to explain things using examples that are easy to understand, but expect that this content is going to be a little more educational than inspirational at times, if that makes any sense. Oh, and I'm going to try and keep everyone muted during this presentation, but if you do have questions, just ch type them in that chat window, and I'll try and get to them at the end. So let's dive in, if I can. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Uh, delivery is really the backbone of our ads platform, and it's responsible for showing ads to the right people at the right time. Basically, the system evaluates what someone might want to see in the context of what an advertiser like you is trying to achieve to help advertisers get optimal results for their ad dollars. Simple enough, right? Uh, actually, simple is not a word I would use to describe Facebook's ads delivery platform. Uh, and one of the reasons is because Facebook never stops tinkering and it's undergoing near constant change. Uh, before Facebook, I led a social marketing for a large CPG brand. And I totally understand how frustrating it can feel when you aren't able to replicate your previous results or your ad stops delivering altogether. There are a lot of strong emotions around delivery. And that's why I want to lead a conversation like I'm having today, uh, where I get to share some of the principles that helped me grasp what Facebook's ads delivery is doing on the back end. A point that I really want to underscore is that ads delivery system is designed to join the needs of advertisers and people. Our goal with delivery is to create good experiences for people that drive real results for advertisers. You as advertisers understand your, your business goals best, and we understand how people interact with ads on Facebook. But to be successful, ads delivery has to understand both of these systems. When you share with us the true business goals that you're trying to achieve, which, let's be honest, is probably not a website's click, only then can our system efficiently find the people who are most likely to lead to the results you want. As you may have seen announced in our latest earnings call, there are over 1.86 billion people active on Facebook's apps and services, and millions of advertisers are trying to connect with them. In aggregate, our ads delivery system is making trillions of decisions every day. We run an auction every time there's an opportunity to show an ad to an individual on our platforms, tens of billions of times a day. We're talking hundreds of thousands of auctions every second. Each time a person scrolls through their news feed, we have to go and find the right ads to show that individual. At any point, this could be tens or hundreds of thousands of different ads. The delivery system has to pick the best one to show, one that the consumer will find interesting while delivering on the advertiser's objectives. And these decisions need to be made within a fraction of a second to make sure that the ad will load fast enough within the person's feed. There are a number of layers of optimization that go into these decisions. But before you can really grasp how each layer affects delivery, it helps to understand one of the core differences behind Facebook's delivery system and most other ads auctions. That's the pacing. At its core, a delivery auction understands your budget, your bid, and your time frame. On the chart here, every one of those little circles represents an available impression that fits your audience constraints. Each one has a different value based on the auction. Now, if you don't trust Facebook to optimize your ad pacing, just select Accelerated Delivery and optimize for impressions. Accelerated Delivery will deliver every impression available that falls below your bid. In essence, you'll attempt to win every auction up to your max bid. That includes all these little green circles here. and unless you have an infinite budget, and if you do have an infinite budget, please let me know because we have some investment opportunities to talk about. <laughs> so unless you have an infinite budget, you will blow through all of your cash extremely quickly as you can see here. In addition, you don't get a particularly good cost per impression. Most delivery systems solve this issue of pacing by something called probabilistic throttling, which is very difficult to say. Uh, basically, your likelihood to win any individual auction below your bid increases or decreases based on your remaining budget and time frame. As you can see here, this results in a somewhat randomized distribution. Now, probabilistic throttling has a few things going for it. One, 
It ensures that your budget is distributed throughout your time frame. And two, and I think this is the main reason most systems use probabilistic throttling, it ensures consistency. If you decide to increase your budget or run a secondary campaign, your cost per impression should remain essentially the same. This consistency can be remarkably helpful for marketers handling planning and budgeting, but consistency also sacrifices value. Facebook's system relies on best response bidding, sometimes called discount bidding, but I think that term makes it sound a little bit too much like a thrift store. Best response bidding means that based on your remaining time frame and budget, Facebook will adjust your bid to win the lowest cost auctions. As you can see, this results in more won auctions for the same budget. Facebook's approach to pacing yields lower cost per results than the approach we understand is used by search platforms. However, as you can see in this chart, Facebook's cost per result may increase as your budget grows. This growth is because, in our hypothetical example, your available auctions to win are static. So as your budget increases, the best response bidding must choose higher cost auctions to spend your larger budget. Essentially, your larger budget yields more results, but at a higher cost per result. One important thing to note, even those of you with infinite budgets, the Facebook cost per result line will never cross the red line. The point at which they meet represents every possible auction below your bid being won. You could throw another five million at your budget, and there's literally no other auctions below your defined bid available within your audience constraints and time frame. Does that make sense? I hope so, because advertisers like to complicate things. Apparently not every one of you wants to maximize for impressions. Advertisers have different goals, as you can see a lot of them here. And these goals mean that not all impressions are equal. Some impressions may be more likely to deliver results you want than others. But before I move forward to explain how we rank ads for the purpose of optimizing results by objective, I want to clarify one misconception that I think causes a lot of skepticism with the ads delivery system. Our system is designed to maximize the results you receive based on the objective and the constraint constraints you provide. This means if you define your audience constraints to include everyone in the Philippines and the U.S., don't get mad when nearly all of your results come from the Philippines. The system sees all results within your constraints as equal. It doesn't know that you really want more from the U.S. All it knows is that you want to receive the most overall results for your budget, so it displays your ad heavily in the Philippines because that's where it knows it can receive lower cost results so you'll be able to achieve more results for your budget. Similarly, if you define your objective as clicks, when really you want a deeper funnel conversion like a purchase to occur, you may receive many, many clicks that just don't convert. This is because Facebook is optimizing for what you told it. You told it you wanted clicks to drive traffic to your site, and it's not optimizing for the traffic to actually complete a conversion. That would be something you could do with the Facebook Pixel. The solution is pretty simple. Tell the delivery system the truth. <laughs> Select the objective that you really want to achieve, or at least get as close to the business objective as you can. And choose audience constraints with the understanding that all the results of your audience are going to be weighed equally. Our delivery system is really smart, but it's just terrible at inferring things that you don't explicitly tell it. But don't worry, I think this AI limitation will probably keep us all employed for a few more years. So how does it decide which ads to show to an individual? For every ad targeting a person, regardless of what type of bid or objective we're using, we calculate a total value in order to rank it against other ads that are targeting that person at the same time. In essence, we calculate how valuable an impression in front of a specific person will be for you, a specific advertiser. The highest total value is going to win the auction for that person at that moment. We calculate total value based on three things. The advertiser bid, which is how much do you value the outcome you're optimizing for. Two, estimated action rates, which are you can think of as the probability for every impression served as the outcome you're looking for will happen, such as a conversion. And three, ad relevance and quality. How useful or interesting do we think this ad is going to be to the individual you're targeting? So you have three components to define total value. Advertiser bid, estimated, estimated action rates, and relevance and quality. And I'll explain these a bit more in a moment. If you like mnemonic devices, together these spell the word, word bear, which you can see in the bottom left of your slide. So you can think about this little guy when you're trying to remember how to get delivery in an auction. With the bear equation, you can understand how a relevant ad with low advertiser bid can still have a high total value and be served. Or, 
a high advertiser bid paired with a low expected click-through rate or conversion rate can still result in a low total value in a losing auction. If your delivery is not meeting expectations, one of these components may be too low for your audience constraints. The first piece in the total value equation is the advertiser bid. And the first step to setting up your Facebook campaign is selecting an objective and an ad set optimization goal that most closely aligns with, your, with the outcome you care about. An important next step is to give us a truthful signal about how much you value that outcome via your bid. If you're optimizing for something like web, website conversions or app installs, you've got three main ways to set your bid today. You've got automatic bidding, which is a good choice if you want the system to get as many results you're optimizing for as possible. Here we're going to adjust the bid on the back end to make sure you stay competitive in the auction to show more ads and get more results, but we have no guarantee of the average cost per result. Automatic bidding is the default bidding option for most other optimization goals too, like video views, post engagement, reach, brand awareness, etc. Now, if you have specific cost thresholds, like I don't want to spend more than $50 per conversion, you're going to want to set a manual bid, and there's two ways you can do that. One, you can set a maximum bid, where we only show your ad to people if we think we can find conversions lower than that bid you've set. Or two, you can set an average bid, where you've specified the average cost per result you'd like to see, and we adjust the bid on the back end to reach that average. Now some initial learning happens when each new ad set is created and activated. After a bit of initial delivery, if we estimate that we can't find you any more of the results you want, given the constraints you've indicated with your bid, then delivery will slow down, and in some cases it'll stop altogether. Basically this is the estimated action rate part of the equation going into practice. It's too low for you to win any further auctions at your existing bids. Estimated action rates, or you can think of them as for every impression served, what's the probability that my desired outcome will occur? Most commonly we think of them as click-through rates or conversion rates here. But there are many other factors that influence estimated action rates, including recent activity on the ad, characteristics of the user you're showing it to, your ad set, your campaign, your account history, your page or app history, among others. If you're optimizing for website conversions, set up your ad sets so they have a higher chance of capturing more conversions. Facebook typically needs around 25 conversions to properly estimate the action rate and begin optimization effectively. More data means that our optimization models can work even better on your behalf. Finally, the third piece in the total value equation is relevance and quality. This one's a little self-explanatory, but allow me to explain anyway. You can get a best sense of how your ad is doing here by checking the relevance score metrics in ads reporting. In reporting, you can see an aggregate relevance score in addition to a breakdown of positive and negative feedback. Relevance scores show you how relevant we think the people in your target audience are finding your ad. This is ranked against other ads targeting those people. We rank from 1 to 10, with 5 to 6 being average. Aggregate relevance scores matter the most, but it's always a good idea to monitor for high negative feedback to understand what may be happening. Negative feedback means that a lot of people are hiding or Xing out of the ad, and that can hurt your competitiveness in future auctions. Also, as part of this relevance and quality component in the total value equation, consider how well this ad is doing based on the quality variables we consider, like text in the image or bounce rate. Both of these could hurt your competitiveness. So let's check out a real example. Well, real-ish. None of these people are actually real. Uh, for the advertisers, Elaine, Jerry, and George, they want to show an ad to Kramer. Here's a simple illustration of how we'd figure out which of the three wins the auction and gets to show them the content. Using each advertiser's bid and our estimated probability that Kramer will take the action they care about if we show him the ad, we first calculate how much an impression shown to Kramer is worth for each advertiser. This provides us an advertiser's value. Of course, Kramer finds some things interesting and some things not so interesting. Based on his activity on the platform and the activity of people like him, we'll estimate that he'll want to see certain things in his feed. This is his user value. So let's say Kramer has been seeing a lot of ads from George and his baseball app that he actually has started to hide them or X out of them. So he's really unlikely to find more value in seeing more ads from George. So we predict that there's a negative user value for George. But we think he'll be equally interested in finding the ads from Jerry and Elaine. So you can see they both have a $20 per thousand user value. When we add the advertiser and user value for each ad, we get the total values. 
and we can see that Jerry's ad wins with the highest total value of $60 per thousand impressions. So we'll show Jerry's video ad to Kramer. But that's not the end of the example because I don't think Jerry would be too happy spending $60 CPM. We still need to figure out what price Jerry pays with best response bidding. A simple way to think about it is, in this particular example, let's look at the minimum amount that Jerry would have needed to win his auction. This is the bid that would set Jerry's total value equal to the total value for the second ranked ad, which is from Elaine. The user values between the two ads are the same. For each advertiser values to be the same, Jerry would have only needed to bid five cents per video view rather than 20. As a result, Jerry, if he's buying on a cost per view basis, would be charged five cents if his video is viewed after winning this auction, a lot less than the initial bid of 20 cents. That's an example of why, if you set a manual bid for an ad, you'll generally see an average cost per result end up lower than your real bid. So this is how a single ad auction works on Facebook, how we se select a single ad to show an individual at a given moment in time. When we talk about ads delivery in general, we're talking about doing this in a large scale among many, many auctions over the course of a campaign. So here's more of an example of how that works in everyday life. Let's say we have $400 to buy the best spread for dinner. I clearly did not make this example or it would have said something like we have $22 and a Starbucks gift card. But anyway, let's say we want to get organic ingredients from store A and, store, and we have store B. So these are our constraints. These two different stores have the same ingredients. And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we have to assume all of these ingredients are equal. So how do you spend your $400? Do you divide it evenly? Do you spend it all in one store? Do you use a previous shopping trip to inform your, your decision? The name of the game here is fluidity. We can buy the best combination of delicious yet cost-effective organic ingredients by staying flexible, by knowing which options are available at the very moment we're shopping and not predetermining how much money to spend at each store. If we are flexible and allow our budget to apply to whichever store is offering the lowest cost ingredients, will obviously get more value than assigning a specific dollar value to each location. This same practice applies to the Facebook family of apps and services. Allowing an ad set to appear on multiple placements across Facebook, Instagram, and audience network allows you to get more efficient results because the delivery system can comparison shop. Buying across the Facebook family of apps and services allows Facebook's best response bidding that we talked about earlier to function to its fullest potential. As you can see here, Adam's trying to sell some Bermuda shorts and running his campaign on both Facebook and Instagram simultaneously. The option to include multiple placements is available every time you create an ad set. By running on both platforms, Adam achieves an average cost of $6.99 per short sold and he sells 16 pairs. A common mistake many advertisers make is to compare the breakdowns to find the best placement, or at least try to. So if Adam compares the average cost on Facebook versus the average cost on Instagram, he might assume Facebook is just a better placement because it has a lower average cost. However, look at what happens when Adam decides to remove Instagram from his placements. Our best response bidding system will have less available auctions to bid on and will have to run less, of his, less efficient placements. Because of this, when, when running on Facebook alone, Adam sells one less pair of shorts and his average cost per conversion is actually 17% higher. Best response bidding effectively draws upon the increased auctions available and additional placements to drive more results with the same budget. Each of these examples illustrates one of the core principles defining Facebook's auction system. Maximize total value or results subject to advertiser constraints. More specifically, we try to maximize total advertiser results driven by an ad set subject to constraints like bid, budget, schedule, targeting, or placement. These constraints should give the delivery system the clues as to what's valuable to you and eliminate the spaces where you find no value at all. For example, if you're an advertiser selling or alcoholic beverages, people below a minimal drinking age in your location probably have no value to you, so you set your targeting to exclude those people, which makes sense. Fluidity, or the lack of unnecessary constraints, is important to our system's ability to return the most value it can to advertisers. Running media with an extended time frame, a large target audience, and multiple placement options will allow Facebook's best response bidding to run efficiently. It will simply be more auctions that could be won to maximize your results. I want to give you a few takeaways before taking some questions. 
Our auction and delivery system is designed to maximize value for both people and businesses. Remember the Bayer framework. Secondly, remember that setting constraints like targeting and bid affect your delivery. So set these constraints only when necessary to drive business outcomes. Also pacing. Arguably our most important differentiator from ad delivery on search platforms is our pacing system. It finds the most efficient results first, whereas search gets more expensive yet steady cost per result. And finally, test and iterate. The ad auction system is dynamic. Different people are online at different times, different audiences shift and change. I like to equate it to financial markets, and the best results will require testing, iterating, and retesting. So I hope you enjoyed the webinar. There should be a short survey available in a moment that you can take to say how good or bad you thought I did.